Good morning, everybody, and welcome to The Artist's Well. This is our 20th uh, episode, would you believe, and it's taking place on the Festival of Samhain, uh, Halloween. So we're all very excited here, some more than others now, in fairness, but I know there are quite a few people who are really, really interested in this time of year. Um, we are delighted uh, this morning to have Nikki Hayden uh, as our special guest. And once again, I'm very grateful to Olivia Corney for encouraging Nikki to be featured on The Art as well. Olivia is very proactive uh, with his, his, the artists that he represents. And I would encourage any other gallerist or indeed any representative of anybody in the arts. It doesn't necessarily have to be just the visual arts because we want uh, poets, we want uh, actors, we want film producers, we want singers, we want dancers. Everybody in the arts is encouraged to participate in this. Um, so if you know of anybody or you know of somebody who represents artists, um, now is the time to do this because it's quite easy for them to come on Zoom. They're not quite as busy and all the more reason why they would uh, want to up their profile, keep their profile up during this particular time. Um, so please do uh, bear that in mind. Um, I would like to apologize to our great friends in Canada and the States for not <laughs> advising them of the change of time. So they ended up getting an hour earlier and I'm sincerely sorry. I should have copped that one and sent out a message to you all. So sorry about that. Anyway, back to the business at hand. So Nikki Hayden, our guest, was born in London in 1961. She has been a practicing artist for over 30 years and was a director in the Black Church Print Studio and the Graphic Print Studio in Dublin. Nikki was on the steering committee of two major exhibitions, Revelations uh, in the National Gallery and Artist Proof in the Chester Beatty Library. Her work is in many collections throughout the world and including here in Ireland in the OPW, uh, many hotels, businesses and so on, and also the National Gallery of Ireland. She works in oil painting, sculpture and installation, and sometimes involves poets such as Theo Dorgan, Paula Meehan and Rachel Hegarty in some of her installations. Her current exhibition, which in fact will be about a, a week's time, she'll tell us about it, uh, which is called Sanctuary and is in the Olivia Cornet Gallery. I think it's the 8th of November it starts. Um, it will obviously be done virtually as well. Um, and it is in response to a poem written by the American poet Peter Money, who was taught by Allen Ginsberg. Uh, Nikki was introduced to Money uh, while working towards a previous exhibition that was run in the James Joyce Gallery. In Peter's Money work, she found an echo of something she was very familiar with. The poem is called To the Lady in Pink Standing on Top of the Bridge. And a lot of, I think all of the work that she's going to be um, showing, both installations and paintings, uh, evolves around this particular poem. And I think you'd be quite fascinated about it. Um, so good morning to you, without further ado. Good morning to you, Nikki, how are you? Good morning and thank you for having me. <laughs> my pleasure, my pleasure. Now I mentioned there that you were born in London in 1961, mm -hmm. and, um, but you weren't there very long. Would you like to tell us about the whole process of you growing up and coming over to yeah. Ireland? Yeah, well, growing up was all of six months. Um, and then my mother put me, uh, you know, in her arms and with my three siblings yeah. and got on an airplane while my father went with the furniture on the boat. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, we got we got the luxury trip. You know? Obviously, yes. um, I'm sure it was a propeller, a luxury trip. Um, and my mum obviously had, you know, four kids and a new baby. So a uh, lovely lady on the plane asked, could she hold me for the entire journey? She'd lost a baby herself. And, oh, and yeah. um, so my, my first journey to Ireland was obviously in the arms of somebody who really needed to hold a baby. So I mm -hmm. feel very lucky. <laughs> yes, yes, mm. yeah, absolutely. And, and I'm, sure, I'm sure your mother was, was kind enough to do that on the basis that she had three others she could look after. That's right, yeah, 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 yeah. And absolutely. You know, please hmm. do help yourself. <laughs> I, know, I know, So you arrived over in Ireland and were your parents involved in anything to do with the arts? No, but my, to be fair, my father, I think, could have been an artist in a different um, life. You know, hmm. he, 
he was actually a hairdresser, um, but he had done sculpture classes at nighttime in colleges and um, he always drew. He was very good at portraits, mm. um, but he was also very thrifty. So we never had a portrait done on a piece of paper. It was always done on um, the, a cardboard carton or yeah. normally cornflakes. Yes. <laughs> you know, opened up. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah. yeah, and he had like chalks, which where you know I, I i remember his original chalks mm -hmm. they never got used because they were too good to use so it, you know it was it was that it wasn't that he was he just loved the materials and i think mm -hmm. i get that so much that he didn't want to squander you know yeah. yes yeah. um so yeah but he was very good at portraits he used to do uh, portraits uh, i remember specifically one very good one of my brother and mm -hmm. he used to you know if we would sit still enough for long enough you would do them um, yeah yeah and and how about your mom was she was she involved in, in art or no like, in but she was very encouraging um yeah. my mum basically thought you can do anything you want to do <laughs> you know was the way, <laughs> was, was yeah. the way she used to put it. it was like we could we could be i could be a rocket scientist I could do anything um you know and I used to joke because I'm very dyslexic well I can't be a newsreader mom oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was jo joking though you know I know but um yeah you know, we we they were both very good people really and um I think my mom was particularly encouraging yes very good and you mentioned dyslexia there is, is this yes. something that is Oh, it, well, yeah, I mean, as, uh, like, I think the thing is, people tell me, leave it, you're, you know, you're nearly 60, let it go. Yeah. But I, I can't, because I just see it's still an issue in, in schools, and in, even in adult education, it's kind of going, things are being cut, um, and people that could have opportunities in later life don't get them as as easily. The course I did, um, uh, you know, there only a few years back has been cut. It was um, uh, an adult literacy course, Career Paths for Adult Dyslexics, and um, that's been cut. And it was an amazing thing. And it was getting great recognition throughout Europe. Mm. Um, and to be honest with you, it gives, it levels the playing field because it's for, it is people that can't afford to go and get that sort of help themselves. You know, yes. you. Yes. You know, and the, the, a lot of people can't. And why should your your income decide your 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 end result? You know, mm -hmm. it shouldn't. And that's the way I still see it in schools because when my kids were 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 growing up, and I caught signs that they, they were dyslexic, I I just basically got tutors, and um, they were they were well looked after. They also had whatever was available in the school. But I found more often than not, the tutors in the school were taking tricks from, you know, the, the better trained tutors that I uh, that I was employing. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, but as a result, none of my children have a sign of being dyslexic. They're all straight A students, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. um, except obviously dyslexic is dyslexia is always with you. So like they will still have to work a little bit harder in terms of, you know, getting things from your short term memory into your long term memory. Yeah, um, so there's there's more f work involved. But once you understand that, you know, you can achieve a lot. Yeah. And how, how does the, how do you think it's affected your life in terms of your career and, and, and art and so on? Has it been of benefit, not benefit, but, you know, yeah. ha, ha, have you gone into that on the basis that the written word in your particular sphere is not quite as important? Well, I suppose it gave me something I could do. You know, it gave me something that I could feel I could achieve where I, you know, my level of, um, I suppose personal confidence was always very, very low because at every turn your dyslexia would let you down, you know. Um, and people, what I've always found is that really, really intelligent people never judge somebody for a bad spelling or a bit of a grammar because if they're, if they're really confident in themselves, it doesn't kind of reflect on them if you know what I mean. Yes. And I think, I think that that's the problem is that sometimes somebody who doesn't spell well or says something a little bit off or gets dates wrong or makes people that aren't that confident feel almost like 
oh my god that crippling sense of insecurity mm, mm, mm. and that's what i would would see i think that comes up for people and then it's like they're ashamed so they need to shame you yeah. you know that kind yeah. of way and it's it's human nature yeah. and it's but it's uh, i suppose i just have found i've never met a truly intelligent person that worried whether i put a spelling incorrectly absolutely i think i think you're absolutely right and i think it's it's very much an insecurity mm, mm. on their part yeah so i suppose it is it is that thing but those kind of people can get in in the way of your you progressing so yeah. for example if i'm writing an application for funding for something mm. if you happen to come across somebody like that you know then you're you're it looks they couldn't have even been bothered learning just to spell it correctly well um, unfortunately sometimes i can look at a thing 10 times over and I, i'm not going to see the wrong spelling um mm. you know i'm going to spell the same word wrong for the rest of my life and yeah. i'm sorry yeah. i apologize <laughs> or i could spell it differently tomorrow yes in another wrong version you know i know what you mean i mean and like so what you know look you know, I, I, I suppose the unfortunate thing is at the moment we have Donald Trump mm. and Donald Trump spells everything wrong. But he yeah. probably is the example of the dyslexic moron who you don't want to be associated with. But unfortunately, now that he's out there, it's actually OK for people to say he shouldn't write it because he can't spell it. So he, actually, gives people, he, he gives people like you a bad name. He does. But not <laughs> only that, he gives people the permission to slag off people that can't spell sure. because, you know, and that isn't right. No. You know, I uh, anyway, yeah. that's that's yeah. my the, my hobby horse. No, no. And, and listen, you know, I mean, I know I know you've done a lot of work in this area. And uh, mm -hmm. one of my researchers uh, <laughs> tells me that, that <laughs> I think you've got an award. I don't have it here, but there was something that you did in terms of literacy um, and the arts and disability. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I got got so I got some help um, from Arts and Disability Connect for funding on on a few things, and um, yeah, it's 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 great if you can actually, as a person who has a, a, a disability, help other people. Because, say, for example, in some, one of the areas that I might do a bit of work you've, uh, in, with addiction, um, you will often find that people with addiction. Um, are, can be dyslexic or have uh, literacy issues. Um, now it can come from either being dyslexic and not having the, put in place what they needed. So you get this unstimulated, unsatisfied person whose intelligence is just crushed. Yeah. Um, so mm -hmm. it, can, it can lead to addiction. Um, or it can lead to criminal behaviour, <laughs> all of these things. But on the other hand, if that person's uh, needs are met and they, they get what they, mean, they, they need as a dyslexic person, because your way of thinking is slightly different mm -hmm. and it's less linear, um, you, you can actually achieve, achieve huge amounts. And that's where I see opportunities need to be given to people whether from young and when they're older, because you can regain your confidence. So, so Nikki, do you think that um, in the whole area of dyslexia, that that art can actually be a bit of a, a not so much a crush, but something that that allows people the the avenue to communicate? That maybe they, I mean, you're a very eloquent speaker. You mightn't be able to spell for nuts, but you're a very elegant speaker. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, do, do you think art has a place um, for, you know, to help people with, with dys dyslexia? I, I do. And I do. And I do specifically because not all dys dyslexic people have good verbal skills mm. because it can hit you in different ways. Uh, right. You know, some of the people that were on the course with me might have had a difficulty in actually pronouncing words because it's like that you know that classic hospital thing that a baby does you know your arrow sequencing is askew so you know you're you're kind of lucky if it, it, there are sliding scales and yeah. different things can be affected yeah. so if you do have a verbal problem mm. then it would be an amazing gift but even without that as i say for me it was the one thing people said you're good at that yeah. you know yeah and it meant that even though i couldn't be confident in all aspects mm -hmm. and i you know i could i could glean a little bit of self esteem there yes and I, I think that that's what 
would help a person maybe not to go down the addiction route or not to become a criminal or not to do something crazy out of frustration. So for the most part, it's about a reasonably intelligent person stuck in a, a body that is refusing to communicate in the way that is now acceptable to the rest of the world. Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah. Okay, so let, let, let's move on to sort of family a bit now because you've got three daughters. I have. As I have. A uh, little younger, I think yours are than mine. Um, I think I think we're about the same. I'm, I'm 34, 32, and 22. All right. Oh, you're not you're not too far away from me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> and and you're married to Robert. That's he's your right. Partner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he's also an artist. That's right. He's he's director of Graphic Studio Dublin. Okay. And what type of artist is he? Um, well, he's a, a print artist, mm -hmm. and he. Um, but his he, he learned sculpture in college, um, so you know that kind of work is his favorite kind still. But um, we both of us always feel that printmaking is just mini sculpture; it's just on a very very narrow yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. narrow level. So you're you're up. Have you commandeered the attic? Then is that is that your studio? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, the, uh, the house has arms and legs. As I've said to people, we live in a mansion in Cabra, you know. <laughs> so um, it, we, we actually have half of the bottom half of it is a, now an apartment for my daughter, Stephanie, and her partner, Ulysses, which I think is a fantastic name. Um, Are you talking about that again? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And, um, and uh, as somebody said, did you do that on purpose? No, I didn't pick my daughter's husband <laughs> with that name. No. Yeah. Um, then I have another daughter who is um, living downstairs, actually, in what was our sitting room at the moment. She has that as a sort of a sitting room come um, bedroom. Um, she's my poet, yeah, and yeah. she's come back from England because she's not well. She has uh, multiple sclerosis and she's trying to regain her strength and um, she's doing a great job of it. Uh, it's not easy, but she's, you know, she's she's getting there. Yeah. Um, and then um, we also have a, a house guest at the moment, Astrid from Germany, very nice girl. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of us in the house. Um, so where, where does Robert fit in? Robert um, built himself a studio in the garden. Okay. <laughs> and it's not any old garden, given you live in, in a mansion in Cabra. That's right, yeah. It's as about long as your garden. 200 foot long and about 70 foot wide. Wow. Yeah, so, wow. and it's, uh, we're, we're the, the plan is that um, we, we've we already started planting the end as kind of like a forest garden, yeah. so that, you know, by the time whoever gets this, they'll be able to be completely self-sustained by foraging around down the back. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. So, so Robert is, is, is there in the middle of, of, of what, what He's in the middle of, of that. Yeah. yeah, sounds like the good life, all right. It is actually, we are very lucky because it does, we are in the middle of Cabra and we just happened to get the, the, the plot that was, you know, the biggest on those, the old Cabra Road and the new Cabra Road triangle so we got the big we got the big part of the triangle which i think is kind of interesting because all my work is about triangles at the moment it's true, very true. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. but it's a very it's actually very peaceful when you go down the back end of the garden sometimes you just sit there and you think god i'm so lucky you know yeah. wonderful it's wonderful to, to have, a, have a, a sanctuary like that yes it is it truly is yeah yeah, yeah. And, and also the name of your your, your next exhibition sanctuary mm-hmm um, tell us about this chap uh, before we go on to the slides, because we want to show some slides of your mm -hmm. previous work and your current work um, and so, installations and so on. Um, tell us about Peter Money, whom, whom I wrote as Mo Mooney, by the way. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I met. Well, me see the the thing is again, you you know, you could be if I wrote Money, you could think no, she meant Mooney. <laughs> yeah, <that's> right. <laughs> Guilty. <laughs> E easily it's okay <laughs> um sorry about that yeah, it's fine um yeah i met I, well i i came across peter when i was working on um a, the actually the initially in the olivier cornet gallery the first exhibition joyce one that i was involved in there and um jessica who was running um the James Joyce Center at the time, and I'm uh, I'm not going to say her second name because I always reverse them because my verbal dyslexia. It's Peel Yates or Yates Peel. I, I can never get it right. Yeah, that, that can't she, help you. 
<laughs> she'll know who she is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. she, she introduced me to um, him, said that he was a, a very interesting poet and that he had worked with Ginsburg and that, um, you know, he, he was interested in sending haiku. Mm. So um, I said, great. And he sent me so many and mm. it was lovely, really lovely. Can I stop you there? You yeah, have sure. to explain to people what haiku is. Haiku oh. is. Um, well, I actually am not going to explain haiku because I get told off every time I explain it because I don't get it right. Because okay. there's very, very many people that say modern poets will say, you know, there's no syllables in um, Japanese anyway. So what are you talking about? But um, the person who I'm getting to collect haiku at the moment is more is goes the more traditional route, which is um 17 syllables no, but it's it's normally um five seven five mm. so um you know you basically uh, i'll read you i'll read you mine for the thing and then you'll yeah. get an idea sure open pink blossom falling for sanctuary comes home to heaven so oh, it's oh. yeah so it's a short poem but you're supposed to be i think you're supposed to refer to nature you're supposed to refer to the seasons yeah. um there's all sorts of rules but in modern um haiku you it, there it, it's much more free and, and open um but for this you know i think for for, for when you're opening something to the public it's nice to give some sort of a structure yes absolutely. you know yeah, but it, you know, to, to be honest with you, um, you know, artists of any kind should be free and should be, you know, yeah. I mean, obviously, if you're asking for a short poem, you don't want them to send you a novel, you know. I know, but I mean, anyone can write this, you know. Anyone, yeah. Yeah, and I know you've encouraged people to do that. I have, and yeah. I like, I like that idea of being inclusive. Sure. Yeah. So, so you've asked poets like Theo Dorgan and, and so on to. To, to do that with you. And I, I also believe you, you, you wrote to um, Stephen Fry. Yeah. Because he's yeah, a, I mean, a James Joyce aficionado, isn't he? Yeah, he, he, he's, he's oh, it's amazing. And, you know, everybody's saying, how do you know Stephen Fry? I don't know Stephen Fry, but you can look up online and you can say, oh, how do I contact Stephen Fry? You can actually put that in. Yeah, doesn't always get to them, but, you know, you can try yeah. it. So I, I, I did. And there, there's a management company that look after, um, you know, his business and mm. other things in his arts things. So I just wrote and I said I was putting this exhibition on in the um, in the James Joyce Centre. And I was hoping that he would like to contribute a haiku. Uh, and, you know, he said yes. Um, and I asked, invited uh, my husband, Robert Russell, to create the work because um, I had already ha created the haiku wheel and I had all of that in place and I just thought you know again because I am I do like being an inclusive person I just thought it, it's going to feel better it's going to feel nicer if we're all in um, so um, Robert made those pieces of work so it was one for uh, Rachel Hegarty one for Paula Meehan Theo Dorgan uh, Stephen Fry and then another girl called um, Patricia or oh, Janie Mack, her name has just gone right out of my head. Sorry, forgotten it. Right. Um, right. Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, um, she knows who she is. She, kn she knows who she is, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Now, since we're talking about that, because it's a really fascinating subject, shall we go into the slide presentation that we put together? Yeah. And uh, whilst there, there are a few um, paintings to, to, to look at before we go into the haiku, I think. Uh, Let's get there since, since okay. we're on the subject, okay? That actually is a print. Um, oh. I, I, I originally etched it on copper. Yeah. So, um, and then I basically printed it on black paper, as if I remember. Yeah, printed it on black paper with, um, with various, there was like three plates involved. Um, and I used white ink and green ink um, and it was sort of supposed to have that feel of like your um, Sacred Heart uh, mm. painting. Um, and at the time it was working on, um, there was a lot of stuff on the news about abuse and so on. And, and I just couldn't help thinking about all of these Sacred Heart pictures that we all looked at for years. 
and you know how schools treated people um and that's what came of it um that that particular print it was quite a it was it's was almost something like you ha I had to make um and there wasn't really anything else with it it was just something that I worked on for a good while and it it satisfied a need and then I could move on now this is a, is a group um, one that we didn't have in the presentation when you and I flicked through it, mm -hmm. uh, but I noticed it was there and I'd forgotten to put it in, so I, I just put it in now. Mm. That so one is it, that one was for the the exhibition um, "Settling the Past," uh, which was on in the um, the lab in two thousand and eighteen, and and in a way, actually, the lab were responsible for giving me um, the chance to change the what the perception of me as an artist you know because I had the lab were very very happy for me to do installation painting and I think were the beginning of freeing me up as as an artist and that's uh, Sheena Barrett like she's she's very good and it, you know it's like she understands that there that at certain times in your life you will make a leap you will make a jump and a change in your work um and you know she doesn't put put you in the box of you have to be a young artist or you have to be this artist mm -hmm. she just sees the work evolving and I think she saw something was happening for me yeah. and at the timing was good and she really helped is, is oh yeah and she yeah she also told me I should talk to Olivier oh right okay mm. so that goes back to when sorry 2018 oh 18 okay all right and is, is the lab, that space in Dublin City uh, DCC, is it? Yes, yeah, D Dublin City Council, yeah. Yes, okay. I think that's where Ray Yates lives. That's his, his yes. office. Is that yeah, right? Because yeah. we, yeah. we had Ray on in the very early days. Right, yeah, yeah. Well, they, they were a great help. And these, again, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of these paintings were to do with, um, my, at that time, I just finished my adult literacy course out in... Um, uh, you know, oh God, I never can remember whether it's Celebridge or, or um, Le uh, I get them mixed That's up good. anyway, yeah. um, career paths. And um, I decided that, you know, I wanted to be able to tell people stories. So again, I put a haiku wheel in that or a, a story wheel where people told stories of their literacy. But what I wanted it to be was a very positive thing so that there would be almost like a meditation and a calmness um, so that while you might be telling stories that are wrenching and, and hurt a little bit, that there would be a soft resolution so that um, you know, people could go and look at the paintings. They might have shared something. They might have even, um, it might have triggered some memories for them looking at the stories on the wheel because this was before it was a haiku wheel. It was a, a story wheel. Mm. And um, it, you know, that, that was what I wanted to do. And in the same way as in, in that exhibition, I put a, um, a kind of like a hope wheel, a prayer wheel, which was um, people could post into it their hopes and yeah. dreams <clears throat> in the future. Yeah, we actually have uh, a slide of that li later on, mm -hmm. uh, which, which we, we, we can show. But just going, going back to this before we get to, to the mm -hmm. haiku, um, mm -hmm. just r run us through some of these images. This is beautiful. Well, again, what I, what I was trying to do was make each piece of, like a little meditation that you could, um, uh, you know, and an a prayer shrine and where you see the gold leaf in, in that one, it's like, you know, this little sarcophagus of, of, of hope. Um, and uh, that was the main aim with all of the paintings, peace, peace. Yeah. Um, and obviously, you know, you're, you're coming from a place where you're trying to achieve it. So, you know, the, when you're looking at the, the, in that, the lightning and coming from behind, you're realizing that you are gaining your peace, but it's not without work. Yeah. Yes. This is when it was in the um, uh, James Joyce Center. And mm -hmm. what I, well, I brought the original small wheel that you see there on the left-hand side that had been in the Olivier Cornet gallery. Um, the wall pieces are the pieces I mentioned uh, that Robert Russell made um, for the poets with their, basically their poems silk screened over. Um, what Robert did there was he put, um, gold leaf silver leaf and he silk screened over the, the work mm -hmm. 
um, and uh, their poems were on it with with images he had um, created and taken from um, photographs. Um, the one in the background is the, the yeah the one on the right there now that's the larger of the wheels and I've I, I've reworked that wheel for this exhibition and the work is is on on it in a spiral formation and it's um, I've changed some of the the work on the physical wheel itself. The piece actually in the background on the wall is something I made um, a kind of like a, a copper replica of a pianola roll. Um, and if you remember in the, um, the, the, the famous song, Love's Old Sweet Song, um, that actually, I owned that pianola roll. I used to own a pianola. I've actually since given it to my niece because I can't really, uh, I don't have the room anymore. This is yeah. too many people. Um, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, they, basically that was a replica. So I did it in sort of a repousse. Mm -hmm. And then I just to to kind of give the sense of the, the what the old pianola roll looked like, I put, I photocopied the 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 the, the writing on it and, and put it on the roll. Um, the table you're looking at is something I made out of. Um, I got an IKEA table and I topped it with etched copper that I had etched and also patinaed copper because, again, I took about a a year of just messing with copper here and seeing what you could do and what you couldn't do with household materials, um, you know, literally with household materials. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, the, with that, the pieces that are on that are basically etched copper um, poems from, the, from around the world, but also from a group called Sail um, where women who have um, addiction issues and um, we did workshops and we produced uh, poems and haikus. S-A-O-L, isn't it? Yeah. Pardon? S-A-O-L, sale. Mm. Irish. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tell me, the, 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 what we're looking at here, are they mm -hmm. individual haikus? No, we can't There's... say haikus, can you? No, you're not supposed to. That's I got told off for that as well. Yeah. You know, well, you told so me it, off as well. So yeah, you have to. You have to, as they say, say the words right, or you're going to get into terrible trouble. Terrible trouble. Yeah. <laughs> but that's um, what they are. They're, they're haiku, yeah. But there's no on each of those sheets. There's three haiku. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, basically, we got a lot of. Um, a lot, a lot of work. This one might be, a, there's probably not haiku on it. This one is a photograph probably from the first exhibition where there'll be, there were collected poems and stories. Yes. <clears throat> that's Theo Dorgan, I think. Yeah, that's Theo Dorgan looking at the haiku wheel. And um, it's something I would like to do is sort of bring haiku wheels to places when this all settles to libraries and things and people could actually you know hold on to it for a year and collect writings and you know it could be a really nice thing okay you can go in and look at yourself on the wheel I'd like to try and do that it's like it's like a giant artistic Rolodex yeah exactly that's a, that's what I was, I was trying to describe what I wanted yeah. to make that's exactly how I described it yeah. it's wonderful it's a brilliant idea <laughs> brilliant idea <clears throat> Now this is part of the new wheel, but actually I've taken all the paper off at the moment and I've, because I just, when I started seeing these lovely lines appearing, um, I thought, oh, you know, so I've done a little bit more work to the paper um, and I've to put it all back on again. So that's the one for the new exhibition. Okay. And don't, don't you have a, a Japanese specialist in, in this? Yeah, what, Taomi what Iwawaki um, Rebel. She's she's it, it is a haiku specialist. She's uh, Japanese and um, lives in Germany and in Nuremberg, mm -hmm. and um, she has collected. I'm not sure how many. Well, I think I've got about seventy. I'm really no good at maths either. Mm -hmm. I've got about seventy four pages, and there's roughly about three haiku on each. So, but we're going to continue to collect um, haiku in Ireland so that, and uh, in the world if we can, yeah. and I'm going to at some stage put out her, um, her email address for people to continue to send her haiku. What, what the way we've worked it is, is that um, 
she was very willing to to do the layout you know i just told her how far i needed it down on the page yeah. so that it wouldn't you could be very visible and she collected all the work and just sent me it on a word document and then i printed it and i'm really to be honest i can't be any more grateful to her she's for me that is the last time i did that i you know i was i wanted to uh, shoot myself <laughs> because um, administration isn't my thing yeah you know Fair so enough. yeah uh, but yeah and that's kind of a close up of some of the work on on the actual um haiku yeah. wheel, wheel. I, mm. yeah i basically etched it um because i've got a lot of experience with printmaking um, for the sculptural things, it, it's really so useful. Um, and, it, you know, what I did was I got an, an enormous bath from Woody's, like massive thing. As mm -hmm. you could, you, I could have melted an entire person if I'd wanted to, but I didn't. Um, and, uh, you know, then I would put the, 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 the thing in the bed basin and, and turn it slowly so that the acid would bite it evenly where I'd, I'd expose the metal. Yeah. So it was actually. What, what do you put? You know, sorry for interrupting. Do you put wax yeah. on it? Yeah, you put wax on it for where you don't want it to bite. You yeah. you, you you basically cover it and, and, and um, adhere mm -hmm. to to copper. Yeah, well, you really? you do clean your copper um, first, like some because it was a bigger process. Mm -hmm. I te I used bitumen some of the time, you know, because bitumen is a bit. Um, stronger than the uh, the wax we normally use yeah um but it really depended um on how much because it was such a big thing and i was going to be lugging it around and getting it into the mm. bath it just depended on on how much lugging around whether i use bitumen or 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 actual wax like you the, would the in the normal thank you and then of course the household materials to make the patina happen um you know, yeah. and I, next time I make one, I know what I'll do. I, I'm going to basically go to the guy who I get the tanks from and ask him to give me the ends uh, first so that I don't have to use such an enormous uh, yeah, tank. Yeah, the rest is covered. Mm. Well, a lot of it is covered, but I, I do I do work on the physical tank you as well. well. Mm, okay. mm. Uh, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier. Yeah, that's yeah. The, the, the replica of the um, role done in kind of my form of repousse. And I mean, again, you have to remember, I'm not trained in anything. I kind of learn as I go. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't know, you know, it's it's my version of repousse. Very often you, you discover things that you would never have discovered had you done it formally. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, uh, like it's know. nice. Uh, tell you what's really useful now is that you can learn anything because you've got YouTube. So if I'm not sure about something, for the most part, you can actually do a tutorial in something. Yeah. Um, but it does free you up. Um, I think to. I'm not afraid of material. I love ma my materials are my thing. Mm -hmm. um, I love playing around with different materials. Yeah. Now, this means a lot to you, doesn't it? Yeah, that's my mum. And that's when I had my, my blonde hair. I do change the hair quite a bit. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the, that piece is the, the piece I told you about, like the prayer wheel. I, I imagined it like a, a, you know, a Tibetan prayer wheel. And there was a sort of a post box in the top of it um, where you could put in your wish. And it spun. And the idea with the, the wheel is that it, the more your the, the, the wheel spins, the more the Tibetan prayer gets said over and over again. Yeah. And the, so the same would apply to if you put your wish in. And I remember, I remember saying to my mum, now wish for whatever you want yourself. And she said, no, no, Nikki, I'll wish you all the best in the world. <laughs> <laughs> She, 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 she sounded like a Monty Python mother, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but she had that crazy English accent that, yeah. um, and she had a very good sense of humour. And I thought that was just lovely because, you know, she just wouldn't wish for herself. She wished for me. <laughs> and tell me, Nikki, where do all the wishes go in the end? Is, is there well, any, any sort that, of ritual to that? Well, actually, yeah, I'm I'm going to, again, at some point, uh, at the moment, that's like about quarter full. Mm. So at some point, 
I'm going to have an, you know, another exhibition and put it in something else. And I'm hoping that when it's full, I can eventually take out the wishes and put them in some form. I haven't decided yet, make a piece of art with them okay. that will respect the, the, the actual privacy and gra gravity of the, um, the, 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 the wishes. Yeah. 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 Very good. Very good. Okay, now we're moving on to something different. Yeah, this was um, the uh, opera festival. Um, Olivier uh, asked a few of you know all of us would we would we put in some work for the opera festival. So this was me just having a bit of a a mess with um, the Pacman series idea, and um, I can't, for the life of me now I can't remember the name of that one. But um, I just what thought Don Quixote one no. Yeah, it's the Don Quixote one, but I can't remember it's. Oh yeah, it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so my my crotchety horse and uh, my Don Quixote. Lovely. And that Again. one, um, yeah, I was delighted. That Olivier used that for their little poster, um, and I kind of like that painting a lot. Yes. Yes. Lovely. Mm -hmm. And this one was for the the James Joyce one, and that one is called I think On Guard. Mm -hmm. And again, it was um, main reason I kind of felt that a lot of times the women in Joyce's um, career, what do you call it? yeah, they're just forgotten. Well, not even forgotten. They're there, but they're uh, superfluous almost. And I mean, they're they're intrinsical as far as I'm concerned because mm -hmm. um, he, it, he 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 was. I'm not. It wouldn't take from him he was brilliant and he was all of those things but he was quite an abusive person in a way to the fe female you know to every female and uh, but he was he was he was what he was and uh, I just think that sometimes the women around him didn't get credit for for doing what they did so I wanted to when I did that painting I wanted to make her the stronger central. Of the, yeah. yeah central stage mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. Yeah. This is about Lucia, um, and Lucia was obviously Joyce's daughter, and she was a dancer. And that piece, each individual piece, it's a print, um, it's embossed, and I made the pieces out of lino cut, and I moved each piece as I was making the print until I had enough to make my um, house of cards. Mm -hmm. And it's basically to obviously represent the fact that um, she was was a dancer and also to honor the fact that she again played a huge part uh, and influence in his life in fact in in a funny sort of a way bringing him in into the more modern french society at that time with her and with her dance yes yes now this brings us i think to the the exhibition the upcoming exhibition Mm, does yeah and, well, that and one, money and, and the, the poem and so on so yeah yeah and again the, the, the I suppose the the visual I've chosen to kind of represent this body of work is this uh, strong geometrical triangle because it is a strong shape mm -hmm. and um, the girl on the bridge is standing and she's thinking about jumping and she's in this pink dress and I kind of immediately saw that as as, as a pink triangle and you know what struck me was you know the the uh, strength of the shape but also how often we use that shape as a tent and it's it's been traditionally a place of refuge for women and I, I also thought of um here here you are in this this pink dress like armor you know and it's it's her um sanctuary so i started thinking in terms of changing the name to you know i hadn't thought of a name yet it's you know and i started thinking sanctuary all the way through i started thinking of sanctuary mm. um and i think this body of work has kind of helped me find my own sanctuary as well as hopefully offering it to other people yeah, this this one is is sort of again taking those shapes, but you know, almost making a cloak, um, you know, out of, of of triangles. And it's a lot of it is just where my head takes me when I'm making them, you know. Um, and I I let I kind of let myself be very free. 
although it does look very structured <laughs> and the same there and again it's sort of trying to do homage to other parts of the exhibition the haiku the writing the the the, the feeling of something maybe more japanese in that you know yes um and again the earthiness of the the um the irish and the luminosity of of um uh, of peace and sanctuary when you find it you know the glow <laughs> and i think that's that that's what you you want the viewers to to feel isn't it that the, the, mm -hmm. feel a, a massive sense of of, of peace mm. tranquility i hope so i was looking at your work yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah, and this one, I kind of felt in a way it had that, it, it, it connected me. I like bringing something with me from every exhibition. I don't like just leaving it there because as people, we aren't um, this next body of work. We are what we were before as well. And in a way, I think that has, it has the echoes of the, um, other exhibition in 2018 of that um, little little place of of small place of sanctuary, the sarcophagus, that kind of feeling. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and the same same with that one. That's its friend. Yeah, That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and this one is. Um, one actually, I think my Niall McMonagall is going to be doing a piece on in the um, in the independent, but it was supposed to be the eighth, but I think it's going to be the fifteenth. Sorry, how do you mean? Uh, the, the the Niall is going to do a piece uh, about my work on the oh, yes, and this one he's fe he's featuring this one on the fifteenth. Brilliant, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. very good. And again, you know, you're 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 echoing and you're you're trying to create a mood, but you're also echoing some of the things you imagine. You know, as you know, you're seeing lights in um, what Brooklyn Bridge. I mean, it's not remotely like Brooklyn Bridge, Bridge, but if you ever see those night shots of Brooklyn Bridge, it's always these little dots. Yeah. And I suppose it's, it's literally just that. It's putting down what your what what is coming to you as a feeling and i as i say i did did listen to um as in the beginning i listened to peter money's poem all the time but then i started listening to labyrinth um by david bowie mm. and i just kept that mood then for the whole thing so i tried to keep it like a meditation very good wonderful wonderful that's uh, robert and myself working on we're doing a collaborative piece um for the for the exhibition as well i asked him to would he help me making the i'm going to make it a, a tent um i initially thought i would be you know sandwiching um himalayan salt between um perspex and joining them up like a, a triangle but as robert pointed out that that just might bow so he helped me figure out and i'd also wanted to i love the idea of a uh, stained glass window so between the two of us we came up with the idea of sandwiching the um salt mm. in between the, the two pieces of perspex making my um stained glass window at, at one end of the tent and the the rest of the tent is made of fabric yeah. um there will also be within that a bowl that robert made um, you know a, a singing bowl Mm -hmm. and he made it some time ago and it's not going to be a for sale thing but it's magnificent and when you know um, when you yeah. sit when you sit in the tent it just gives you that again you know I'm hoping, yeah i'm just hoping it will be something <laughs> you know if, if we get it put up in the gallery correctly and the light coming through it in the right way because obviously through the salt you know we've made it a very thin layer so i'm hoping that the light will come through it very nicely and if not, we'll light it like crazy. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that being spectacular, the colour. Well, and then uh, as part of that, uh, within the tent, there's going to be a little string of tri pink triangles that have little phrases written on them mm. that I did a workshop in the um, sale project and basically asked the women um, to think of something that was said to them that might 
really make a difference in their lives that was just a sentence and you know it could be as I gave them an example of mine which was because you know sometimes people say things to you and they make a difference in your life but it's not always what you're expecting and in this case it was my psychiatrist said to me Nikki you know if you don't kill yourself you could be really happy <laughs> and, <laughs> and I, I just cracked up laughing but what what struck me in that moment was was if he'd have said tomorrow will be a better of a day I would have said come on pull the other one yeah. but what what he said was he made me laugh it yeah. stuck and every time I was down because I used to suffer terribly with depression not so much anymore thank god there are there are there are benefits to getting older um you know that 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 you know, it just made me laugh. And I, I, I thought, yeah, tomorrow, tomorrow is always better, you know. Mm -hmm. So they, they started coming up with their ones. And as part of the workshop, we also discovered that sometimes people had had things said to them, but they hadn't realized that that had made the difference. Mm -hmm. Like one woman had her, her sister had said, if you hadn't have done that, this would have happened to me. And you know, actually that made that person feel worthwhile, but it was also good that they acknowledged that that had actually happened and they had been thanked effectively. Yes. So, yes. so you know, there's, there, so I just think all of these things, if you're gonna have a tent of sanctuary, um, you know, we don't all get to our tents of sanctuary with, with happy, clappy, mm. perfect scenarios. We get there in, lots of different ways yeah, yeah. As, as, like your, your painting that showed the thunder and the lightning mm. that you don't get tranquility without that build-up of yeah. chaos and you don't know what tranquility is unless you've been through the mill i think that's a lovely idea of people writing things like that because i mean you're, you're so right about phrases that that, that that are sort of thrown away like you'll mm. never amount to anything mm. <laughs> and 30 40 50 years later you're still remembering that particular phrase that's right yeah write and, it, it down and and mm. float it away with your sanctuary is 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 a lovely thought i think mm. Mm. very good okay that's uh do you want to talk about the dog <laughs> oh suki, <laughs> suki. <laughs> yeah she's um she's a kind of a wanderer now because she's got so many people in the house to visit that um I, there's a little bit of confusion and she's very torn sometimes because really it's it, uh, what i've noticed is that it's who's who's cooking and then <laughs> you know, she'll go there but yeah we are rated out of 10 yeah we've always had dogs and we're going to get chickens again soon but just to go with the rest of the farm the rest of the farm, yeah, because yes, right. you know we figured that with the zombie apocalypse being a reality now, that we've got to get prepared. Do you get on well with your neighbours? I do. Actually, my my next door neighbour is my sister. Um, she she was very she's responsible for me buying that house in the first place. Yes. I used to live in Castle Knock, and um, she rang me and said. Um, I just had a car accident and I was in bits and um, she said I know you're in bits but the house has, has come up for sale next door <laughs> and, uh, so myself and my husband at the time um, Lothar we, we we tried our best to get it it was just one of those houses you're very special um, yeah. not nothing from the outside absolutely nothing but in fact kind of ugly from the outside to be to be fair on the back but just arms and legs and a house you will be in for the rest of your life you know fantastic that's wonderful wonderful mm. the mansion in cabra i won't forget that i live in a mansion in cabra yeah I live in, mansion, <laughs> yes. I lived in africa that's kind of got that feel about it you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway listen that's been wonderful thank you so much for showing us all your work and, and, and being, you know, in a, in a very personal manner, and, and, and I appreciate that. It's, it's not an easy thing for people to do. And you've been extremely honest and forthright in, in, in the way you've spoken. And as I said, so eloquently, to hell with dyslexia. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but try to spell marmalade. That's what well, I'm saying. <laughs> try jam, it's easier. <laughs> okay, we've got a couple of, um, I, I want to open it up to the floor now, but we do have a couple of, um, comments. Uh, what a fabulous mum you had, said Trina, my wife. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yvonne, I identify with Nikki. 
with her dyslexia as I suffer from, oh gosh, you could have warned me about this. I can't pronounce it. It's a number, ah, yes, there's a number differently. Dyscalculia, mm -hmm. yeah, which has impeded me from studying many areas, uh, even in art at times, yeah. I have heard of that before, yeah. Thanks for that, Yvonne. Uh, Patricia Ross. Patricia Ross, you're trying to remember a name? Well, you can thank, you can thank, thank Olivia. You. Or Autumn, no, who is it? Olivia, yeah. Olivia yeah. Uh, yeah, that's fantastic, thank you. Autumn says, is there a title for this one? But I'm not sure which one you meant, Autumn, so maybe you might come back in person on that. Uh, Lucia House of Cards is the title of that. Oh, I see, yeah. Very moving works, says Neve O'Connor. Uh, Trina, love that music, such as Labyrinth, as part of your creative mm. process. Love, yeah, that is part of it, yeah. Mm. Uh, Hugh Cummins, very inspiring, Nikki. Yvonne, fascinating. Jim Cullerton, stunning work and fascinating discussion, thanks. Marketa Babakova says, you are an inspirational woman, thank you. Oh, <laughs> uh, Autumn, my goodness. Thank you so hmm? Yeah, my take a bow. Uh, Autumn says, thank you so much, Nikki. Your compassion is palpable through both your conversation and your work. I love the inclusivity. Um, Breda Smith, lovely to hear you, Nikki. Very inspiring. Uh, that's from Breda in Kilcock Art Gallery. Jacques Descotto says, what a wonderful conversation. Thank you, Jacques. And I hope it was worth you getting up at three instead of four. <laughs> and yourself, I, I really do appreciate you doing that. You're a great supporter. Thank you. This is Olivia here, just to say that, uh, well, first of all, I'm really looking forward to installing the exhibition, Nikki with mm -hmm. you in a couple of days time just to say that the show will eventually be uh, first will be online in our virtual space but when the uh, COVID-19 uh, level five restrictions have been lifted and hopefully we're talking about early December and the show will be open to the public for at least two weeks in December so people will be uh, will have a chance to actually see the work um, and the tent and the installation and, and the poems as well. Mm. And the other thing I wanted to say as well, which I think is important, is the fact that um, Theo Dorgan, Paula Meehan, uh, Rachel yes. Hegarty and, and Anne-Marie Cullen have responded in poetry uh, to this exhibition. And Robert Russell has basically produced a limited edition prints, which will be for sale in the gallery. And Peter Moni's original poem on which the exhibition is based, well, his poem has also been produced as, as a limited edition. So um, all these will be available uh, for sale. And I've already put all the information on our website. It's a very affordable, uh, perfect Christmas uh, gift, uh, if I may say so myself. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I concur. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Mm. Of course. Thanks very much for that, Olivier. Um, anybody else like to say hello? I must be scary. <laughs> you know what? When you mentioned that thing about, about dissolving people in the bath, I think that was it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it is that, you know, it's the witchy time, you know. It is. And it, it's, it, it could happen. <laughs> very, very true. Very true. Listen, it was an absolute joy talking to you. Thank you so much. And yeah. Um, I look forward to seeing that exhibition. I mean, I really, really am looking forward to seeing that in the in the in the flesh. Well, uh, just like to say thank you for doing this. It's a great um, thing for artists to be able to talk out their their process and and um, just to talk in general because we don't get out very much. Um. Particularly now, <laughs> no. um, Tom says uh, this was a real treat, most enjoyable and educational. Thanks, thanks for that, Tom. And Anya says, what a woman, exclamation mark. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are. That's a good way of ending That's, what, that's so, what Robert says all the time. What yeah. a woman. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Okay. So <clears throat> anyway, listen, thanks all for, for watching. Uh, thank you, obviously, for, for being our guest today. But thanks mm -hmm. everybody for, for watching and, and taking the time. Um, you know, we need that sort of support. And uh, if you're watching this on video, please give it a thumbs up. And don't forget to subscribe because the more subscribers we have, the better for our uh, guest artists because they're being seen by more people and the more enjoyable for you, the, the viewer. Um, so next week we have a surprise guest. Why is it a surprise? Because I don't know who it is yet. <laughs> you know, a few things up in the air. And something will land, I know it'll land. Um, and I'll advise you that on Wednesday when I know exactly what's happening. 
So until then, thanks again, all, and I look forward to seeing you next Saturday. Bye now. Thank you. See you, Nikki. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Take it easy. Bye. Bye.